the gospel was preached, you heard it, the Spirit was at work, and so you believed. For every one of us who has been born again by faith in Jesus, that is our story. The details are different, but one way or another, we all have that in common. We were lost, but now we are found. We were guilty, but now we are declared righteous. We were dead, but now we are alive. And through baptism, we display that spiritual reality. We become part of the local church, and we enter into a life of fellowship with God, filled by His Spirit, walking together in obedience to Jesus, who is the Lord, Savior, and treasure of our lives. And in that walking together, we are conformed more and more into the image of Jesus. That's discipleship right? That's what's happening here as the church, as we gather. We are being progressively sanctified. We are being transformed into the likeness of Jesus from one degree of glory to another. And do you know what stands in the way of that? Two things. Ignorance and error. There are things that we don't know that we should know, and there are things that we get wrong that we should get right, which is sin, both deliberate high-handed sin and unintentional mistake sin. Ignorance and error are defects. Ignorance and error are defects in our Christian lives, and we have to deal with that. But how? How do we deal with ignorance and error? The answer is the Bible. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable, listen to this, for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness. Teaching and training confront our ignorance. Reproof and correction confront our error. That's what the Bible does. And as Christians, we will not grow as God intends apart from God's Word. We just won't. So we need more of his word. We need to avail ourselves to receive more of the word of God, which comes to us not just in our moments of solitude, but it comes to us in and through community. We need the Bible in relationship. The Bible in relationship. So this morning, here's the exhortation. Get with others, get in the Word. Get with others, get in the Word. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we in this moment, this morning, we extol your goodness. At every angle of our lives, we see your faithfulness and your sufficiency. You are the cause of our life in Christ, and you are the keeper. And your keeping power comes through the same means as your causing power, which is your word. Thank you, O God, for the treasure that is your holy scripture. Would you shape us more and more by your word? And would you shape us together as a community, as a people? In these days, we are in the spring and enter into the summer and this pandemic is increasingly in the rear view we pray father as we get back into our corporate discipleship rhythms of community groups and life groups remind us of this purpose it's about the bible in relationship as a means to your sanctifying work in our lives And for all the ways that our hearts are obtuse to that work, 
for the ways that we like our ignorance, for the ways that we coddle our error, have mercy on us. Forgive us, Father, for this sin. And we ask that by your Spirit now, lead us in this time of silent confession.